This is a GCSE chemistry tutorial within topic 5. This video will focus on batteries and fuel cells. As you will have looked at in physics, you should be aware of a simple electrical circuit. Here we have a cell connected to a light bulb. The electrons travel from the negative pole through to the positive pole. And as you should know, a battery is a combination of cells attached together in a series circuit. The question that we're interested in for chemistry is how the cell actually works. Here we have a drawing of a simple chemical cell. As you should notice, it is an electrochemical cell exactly at the same as we would see in electrolysis. An electrochemical cell is a system made up of two different electrodes that are in contact with the electrolyte. Both electrodes must be able to conduct electricity, so they are usually metals. The electrolyte is a liquid that contains ions which will react with the electrodes. The chemical reactions between the electrodes and the electrolyte set up a charge difference between the electrodes. This charge difference will then cause an electrical current to flow. If the electrodes are connected by a wire, this means that we have got a full circuit. We can then connect up a voltmeter in order to measure the voltage of this cell. If we connect up multiple chemical cells, then we create a battery. A battery will have a higher voltage as we will add the voltages of each cell that is connected in the series circuit. We can change the voltage of a cell by changing the metals that are used for the electrodes. The bigger the difference in reactivity in the electrodes, the bigger the voltage of the cell. Therefore, if we were to use one electrode of copper and one of potassium, then we will get a bigger voltage than if we were to use one electrode of calcium and one of potassium. Therefore, we can predict what the voltage of a cell might be from the information about the voltages of other cells. The electrolyte used can also affect the size of the voltage as different ions that are present in the electrolyte will react differently with the metal electrodes that are being used. As you should know, you can buy both non-rechargeable and rechargeable batteries. This is changed by the type of chemical reaction that is taking place. In non-rechargeable batteries, the chemical reactions stop when one of the reactants has been used up. Alkaline batteries are non-rechargeable because of this. Once one of the reactants has been used up, there will be no more electrical current produced. However, in a rechargeable battery, there is an external electric current which allows the reaction to be reversed. Because the reaction can be reversed, it means that we can recharge the battery. As well as cells and batteries, you also need to look at fuel cells. A fuel cell uses the energy that's released in a chemical reaction to produce electrical energy. In this, the fuel enters the cell and becomes oxidised and therefore sets up a potential difference or a voltage within the cell. One cell you need to know in particular are hydrogen fuel cells. Hydrogen fuel cells can be used as a form of alternative energy and are starting to be used in cars. In this, they react hydrogen and oxygen to produce water and, as they do so, release energy. In a hydrogen fuel cell, we're reacting hydrogen, which is the fuel, and oxygen in order to produce this electric current. The hydrogen atoms are going to lose an electron, which we know is oxidation. They pass through the electrolyte in the middle, moving from the anode to the cathode, at which point the oxygen atoms gain two electrons each in a process known as reduction. This means that the whole process is an example of a redox reaction that produces water. Any excess hydrogen will also be able to be reused and therefore reconverted across to react with the oxygen to again produce water. 
In a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, the electrolyte is usually a solution of potassium hydroxide, whereas the electrodes are often made of porous carbon, so graphite, with a catalyst present. As this is a redox reaction, we need to look at the two half equations. First of all, we're going to look at the reaction at the anode. It is important to note that in a fuel cell, the anode and the cathode are labelled the other way around. So the hydrogen will be reacting at the anode, which this time is the negative electrode. The hydrogen goes to the anode, at which point it's going to lose electrons. We have H2, one hydrogen molecule. H2 forms 2H plus plus 2E minus. These H plus ions that have been produced then move in the electrolyte towards the cathode, which is going to be the positive electrode in our fuel cell. At the positive cathode, this is where the oxygen is going to need to gain electrons. We have O2, a molecule of oxygen. As such, we need to gain four hydrogen ions, so 4H plus plus 4E minus to balance it out, will form two molecules of water, 2H2O. This is reduction. These electrons then flow from an external circuit from the anode to the cathode, creating an electrical circuit. In order to write our final balanced equation, we need to balance our two half equations. As we require four electrons to create our water, we must release four electrons here. In order to do so, we need to times the entirety of this half equation by two, giving us 2H2 plus 4H plus plus 4E minus. We can then write our full balanced equation, which is 2H2 plus O2 produces 2H2O. Using hydrogen fuel cells has both advantages and disadvantages. The advantages is that it doesn't generate carbon dioxide when burnt. As such, it does not produce a greenhouse gas. Also, they are very efficient, so they are able to create a large amount of electrical energy from a small amount of fuel. However, at the moment, there are very few filling stations that you can get hydrogen. Also, it must be compressed and liquefied and stored in tough insulated fuel tanks. Atmospheric pollution could be generated during the production of the hydrogen. Most hydrogen is produced from natural gases. Also, they do not work at very low temperatures and require a platinum catalyst, which is pretty expensive, and it can be easily contaminated. Instead of using hydrogen oxygen fuel cells, we could instead use batteries for cars. However, although the batteries are rechargeable, there's a limit to how many times they can be recharged. Batteries are more expensive to make than fuel cells. Also, also batteries are able to store less energy, so would need to be recharged more often. Recharging both a battery as well as filling up a hydrogen fuel cell does take time. Hydrogen fuel cells are, however, in talks to be used for spacecraft. This is because they have no moving parts, they're very compact, so they're pretty small for the amount of electricity they produce, they're very lightweight, obviously very useful for launching a spacecraft, and importantly, the water that's produced as a product can be used by astronauts on board for drinking or for cleaning. Here are two example examination questions. One, which looks at why hydrogen oxygen fuel cells are a clean alternative fuel, and the second, why they might be helpful to be used for cars and spaceships. What I want you to do is pause the video here and attempt these two questions. So, for our big question, looking at why hydrogen oxygen fuel cells are a clean alternative fuel, we've got our balanced equation, 2H2 plus O2 makes 2H2O. Hydrogen is a fuel which is renewable, as it can be produced from decomposing waste, and there is no carbon dioxide emissions. 
Secondly, for our challenge, looking at advantages and disadvantages of using hydrogen and oxygen, in spaceships there are no moving parts, they are small and compact, they're lightweight, and we've got the waste water can be used for drinking. However, they are expensive to make. In cars, we come back to that zero carbon emission. It's renewable, it reduces our reliance on fossil fuels. However, they are very expensive to produce. They are expensive to make and they're expensive to maintain. Also, there are very few hydrogen fueling stations at the moment. This concludes the Chemistry Topic 5 videos on energy. In the next video, we will move on to look at rates of reaction.